Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stacy, creator at Mother Naked. Okay, so today I'm going to show you the candle burn test sheet that I use. I actually use one of my own making now. I used to kind of adapt the British Candle Makers Federation test burn sheet, but that is hella confusing. So I kind of simplified it for myself just so I could get through them more and it made everything much easier. So I'm not saying this test burn sheet is absolutely perfect, but it's bob on for my needs. And if you're struggling without a test burn sheet, uh, I will give you mine to try. So here it is, and we're gonna work through it. So basically all we do a test burn sheet is to show the safety of our candle uh, through testing and how it will burn for the customer. If you want a copy of my test burn sheet, it is on my blog. The link is down below in the description box. So please check that out. I hope that helps you guys out if you're struggling, but we're gonna go through it now anyway. All right, so at the top, we've just got Mother Naked uh, Candle Co and Test Burn Sheet. Okay, so we've got, this test should be conducted three times with the same scent, wax, wick, and candle vessel. What I tend to do is just print this test burn sheet out three times, make three of the same candles, scent, wax, everything, identical three candles, and then test them one after the other. So we've got the date that you've started testing the candle and then the end date when your candles burn down. The temperature of the room that you kind of keep constant, mine's always 20 degrees in this house. If you don't, if you don't know that, just put not applicable. And then you've got test number out of three. So you put one, two or three, whichever test you're conducting. You don't actually need to do them all together. You can do them one, one day, one another day. But as long as they're made together, in the, what I do is make them together in the same batch and then test them. Uh, but when you test them, it's entirely up to you. So we've got size of container. I also like to put how much wax is in my container because my 230 ml glass only holds 180 grams of wax. Uh, the container material, mine's glass. Container supplier, I use jarsandbottles.co.uk or Patterson's glass. Diameter of container, my big one's nearly four inch and my little one is just under three. Type of wax, mine would be Eco Soax CB135. Size of wick, uh, whichever I'd be using, a medium or a large, depending on which candle I'm testing. What's the fragrance scent called? So pumpkin spice or whatever you identify uh, your scent as. Uh, amount of fragrance oil, what percentage you use? I use 10%. Again, fragrance oil supplier, mine will be Cozy Owl. Do you use any colored dye? If so, kind of what's your supplier called? And I'd also put some ha the hazardous allergens in there as well, uh, just so you've got that down. I'd also put the amount of dye in percentage. So it might be 1%, 2% dye compared to your wax. What is your wax melting temp? What temperature do you add your fragrance oil at? What temperature do you pour your temperature? Mine's probably about 51, 52. Okay, so now it gets a little bit complicated. This one's taken from the Candle British Candle Makers Federation, and it wants to know the flame stability after five minutes of the first burn. So we're looking for any smoking, any sooting. Is it really large? Is it really small? Is it really, you know, really, really dim? Is it hardly there, like a wood wick? Uh, what's it doing, basically? That's all you. That's all the information you need. But what is your wick doing after five minutes? If it's performing well, I just pull that. Uh, what is your flame height? What I like to do for this is leave it about 30 minutes and then I kind of see what the flame height is. Mine is always like kind of just under an inch with a ribbon wick because the larger flames than other kind of candle wicks. Okay, so you've burnt it for four hours and just before you blow it out, what is the flame stability look like? Again, you're just writing the notes of describing that flame. So is it performing well? Is it flickering too much? Is it too high? Is it perfectly fine? Okay, so is the visible sooting? Is there smoking? Uh, another note about the secondary ignition. After you've trimmed your wick to light it again, how is the wick performing this time around? What is your candle temp at two hours and what is your candle temp at four hours? I just like to put my candle thermometer in and write that down. Is there excessive pooling? Is it not pooling enough? Right, so you've blown your candle out in one of those kind of time intervals after four hours. You've blown it out. How long does your candle in seconds soot or smoke for? And this is your after smoke time. Just put that down. So when you've blown out your candle, you'll have a glow and an ember uh, slightly. Candle Makers Federation want to know how long that ember kind of continues and count that in seconds till it goes out. Are there any cracks in your container? Once you've finished your four hour intervals till the end of the candle's kind of life, uh, is it self-extinguishing? 
after you've done all these four hour intervals and then left it and then four hours again uh, to however long it takes you to burn your candle up, uh, what's, what, it, what is its burn time? Okay, so now we come to the kind of calling me bit. It says, please note to only test burn your candles in four hour intervals. There is enough space in the boxes below in the columns to note your findings after four hour intervals. So basically what it's saying is just keep noting your findings, uh, do a four hour test burn, let it set again, four hour test burn, let it set again. And there's enough room in those boxes to do it. And then just do this until the candle comes to the end of its life, I guess. Okay, so we've got wick mushrooming. Is it wick mushrooming? And I've put it at two hours and at four hours. Has it melted to the edge at two hours and four hours? What's the depth of melt? I like to do it in millimetres. Mine's usually just under a centimetre of a good melt pool. And what it's like at two hours and four hours. Is there any tunnelling? Any smoking or sooting during kind of testing the whole candle to the end of its burn? Then I like to rate the cold throw the cold scent throw fragrance at one out of 10. And you do this for hot throw as well, one out of 10. And then kind of give it like an overall grade, one out of 10, uh, just to see how it compares to some of your like other test burn sheets. Is the frosting, what was the curing time for the candle? Does it have the smooth top? Is it sweating? Does it have a fragrance overload that I like to call rippling? Put all that information down there. Then at the bottom I've just put, please remember this is a personal test burn sheet. If you want a more in-depth use, you can always use the British Candle Makers Federation test burn sheet, which I will also link in my description below. Also, do not forget to test the same candle three times with this test sheet. And I also, I think I put, I hope you found this tip template useful uh, so you can again you can find this template in my blog i've put the link below i will also link the test burn sheet of the british candle makers federation uh, if you find that more useful i won't take it personally this is just the one i use so if you would like to use that one uh, if you're struggling to find one that you like then it's there if you need it so again thank you so much for watching i hope you found the video helpful and i'll see you soon Mwah.